the goal of uh, normative data is really to permit people to compare an individual patient, so in a neuropsychological setting, to a large uh, group of people that are of a similar age, gender and education, and to say something about an individual's level of impairment at a particular time point. Uh, in contrast, what you're trying to do with uh, a lot of research is rather than just looking at somebody's characterising somebody's impairment at a single time point, is to say something about uh, how they've changed, for example, in response to a treatment. And you can only really do that effectively, I think, through having a matched control group. And this is important for two reasons. First of all, because um, it enables you to have much greater control over things that can influence levels of performance. So rather than just looking at age, education and gender, you can look at other variables that may have an impact. And these can be things like the degree of disease severity um, at, at a particular point at baseline, which may influence the degree to which somebody responds to treatment. So you can think about the example of depression how much somebody's cognitive performance or emotional state changes in response to a particular treatment um, is likely to be determined by how sick they are, how depressed they are when they go into that treatment. So that's not something that can be done um, effectively by comparing somebody to a normative group, because a normative group just characterises performance of a healthy sample at a single time point. So it doesn't really say anything about the interaction between a treatment and a disease process itself. Similarly, when somebody uh, is a patient, when they do have um, a disease such as depression or Parkinson's disease or dementia, their cognitive state and their general functioning isn't likely to be static. So if you compare them to a normative sample at two different time points, you aren't really able to capture what the underlying disease process is. So what the natural trajectory of the disease would be independent of the treatment that you're giving them. In contrast, when you compare them to a control group that you've also recruited from the same disease population, you can start to understand what the trajectory of change would be in the absence of a treatment. So that enables you to really say something meaningful about treatment effect. For example, you might have a case where people spontaneously remit or indeed decline in their level of performance over time. Um, and you might see that in a control group, you wouldn't necessarily see that or you wouldn't see that at all if you were comparing them to a normative group where performance is only captured at a single time point.